Hello and welcome to uh, Tech Talks number eight, Making the Most of YouTube. My name is Lucy Gray and I'm your host for this webinar. Tonight we're going to be talking about how to use YouTube in classroom instruction and I hope that you will benefit from this uh, presentation. All the slides and the resources associated with this webinar are available in our Google Classroom. To go to Google Classroom, you visit classroom.google.com on any internet browser, log in with your personal Gmail address, uh, and this is really important to use that because your school Gmail address may not allow you to collaborate outside of your school's domain. So make sure that you log in with your personal Gmail address, and if you don't have one, I suggest that you make an account. Then you click on the plus sign in the upper right hand corner and select join class and enter the code that you see here on the screen. YXFLGJ7, it's all lowercase, and you should be able to get in and see all the recordings and resources associated with the 16 webinars we have created for the Educators Rising program. If you would like to get to our slides, you can go to bit.ly slash techtalk 8 slides um, and find them there in addition to Google Classroom. Uh, the last time we met, uh, we talked about working with multimedia. And uh, I'm not going to go into that again tonight because this is a re recording as our uh, original YouTube presentation was interrupted. Um, but here are some general resources for YouTube that you may find useful. First of all, the help documentation within any Google product, including YouTube, is truly excellent. And uh, make sure that you leverage what is available to you in the platform. Uh, the YouTube Help Center, the G Suite Administrator Help for YouTube is also helpful to um, uh, people who administer uh, G Suite um, setups. And you can also find resources from YouTube on Google Plus. And uh, I've also created some resources as well. I have a list of educational YouTube videos that you can access in the slides. Plus, I've created a Google custom search engine just to search uh, various YouTube channels that are educational. And I also have a group for sharing bookmarks in Digo related to YouTube. So all of these links are available to you in the slides associated with this webinar, and you can find them in the Google Classroom uh, that I mentioned earlier, or at bit.ly slash techtalk 8 slides. So in our previous recording, we talked about how people were using YouTube, and people brainstormed these ideas on a Padlet. And if you click on that link, you should go to, um, you should be able to go to that Padlet and see how people um, are using YouTube currently. We also discussed um, this great video from uh, Improv Everywhere as an example of people's creative uses of YouTube. This is from a group in New York that does kind of crowd uh, sourced, I guess, um, uh, acting scenarios. And in a couple years ago, they, they reenacted scenes from different movies. And we watched this uh, video um, called Gandalf in Real Life, where, where, um, where uh, this actor was kind of being silly in Central Park. Uh, you can look at this if you go to the slides. I'm not going to go into it here. But this is an example of how YouTube has intrigued and delighted me. I, I thought it was kind of hilarious. Another one um, that I really liked is also from the same group. It's Spartacus in Real Life. It's another scenario that they did in New York City, and it's hilarious too. They're, these videos are only a couple minutes long. So I've always been intrigued by the creativity that we see on YouTube and how um, many channels have great followings and many YouTube creators have great followings. Uh, it's a whole. It's one of those careers that we uh, or hobbies, I guess, for some people that we that didn't exist 10, 15 years ago um, before YouTube existed. People were not able to 
create videos of high quality, uh, you know, easily. And now you can. Um, I also was struck a few years ago by um, the use of Google Hangouts on Air, which um, are, I think it's called YouTube Live now. But I remember seeing um, Hank and John Green on a Hangout on Air interviewing the cast from the Fault in Our Stars movie, which is based on a book by John Green that's been very popular. And, um, and John and Hank, and I, I thought it was kind of fun because it brought the world, it brought you know, a, a real life scenario to people through technology. Um, you can see the people in the Hangout here at the bottom that were able to have a conversation with the, with the actors in the movie. But it also uh, brought to my attention that the brilliance of John and Hank Green. Um, not only is John an author of multiple books, but he and his brother have, uh, Hank, have created um, kind of a community for people who maybe feel a little disenfranchised. Um, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head right now, but it's, it's like Geeks of the World or something. Um, and uh, nerd fighters, that's what it's called, nerd fighters. So they have this kind of community uh, celebrating nerddom. Um, but Hank and, G and, and Hank and John have also created several YouTube channels that are wildly popular. And they are examples of YouTube creators, those people that now have um, a following or a, a job basically because of YouTube. So the first one is Vlogbrothers. They, they create a video uh, each week to each other and you know one creates it another one responds um, It's kind of a video diary. They also create um, educational materials and really high quality brilliant ones in a channel called crash course and they have a whole team of people that has put that together including um, curriculum materials that go with those videos and they also are responsible for mental floss um, which you may have seen some of those videos before uh, Hank also does a channel on his own called SciShow, and he is the originator of a YouTube creators conference that takes place in Southern California every year called VidCon. I believe it's been sold to someone else, but I could be wrong. But this is kind of the, the new generation, and uh, they are leveraging YouTube in interesting ways, and it's, it's important for educators to understand how YouTube works so that they can take advantage of everything that YouTube has to offer. Um, another YouTube um, creator family that intrigues me is the Holderness family. Um, you may have seen these videos before, but the father um, is a former newscaster and they created their whole living around kind of funny family videos um, too. So this is another one of my favorites and I just wanted to point it out to people. In terms of favorite educational channels, uh, Explore.org is another one of mine um, favorites. This comes from the Annenberg Foundation, and they have live webcams at different part, times of the year um, in various parts of the world. For instance, in the summer and the fall, they're up in Alaska showing um, bears eating um, uh, salmon in a river uh, in Katmai National Park and that sort of thing. So if you want to give your kids real life experiences, you can find explore.org on their, their webcams on their website, um, their recordings and live videos on, on YouTube, and they're also on Facebook. They've, they've really leveraged a bunch of social media channels as well. Um, another educational channel that I really like and recommend is uh, the Brainwaves Anthology. Um, the gentleman behind this has um, is a retired educator who goes and interviews educators around the world, actually not around the world, but in the United States. He goes to a lot of conferences and universities and interviews experts about a variety of topics and has organized them into playlists. So if you're looking to uh, for professional development resources, the Brainwaves Anthology is the one um, to go to. I personally am not as sophisticated as all these other YouTube creators, and I've been using it, uh, YouTube, to um, supplement my teaching of adults through um, a technology and education course at National Lewis University. I invite other ed tech experts in to talk to my students and I record those conversations in Zoom, the platform we're using, and then I upload the videos into playlists um, for my students to review at their leisure. And I've done this a couple times and 
it's a great way to bring experts into my virtual classroom and expose my students to some other thinkers um, in, involved with ed tech. And with this series, I've also done the same thing. I've created a playlist of all 16 of the videos, um, actually I think they're 15, um, that we've, that we've uh, created as a result of these um, Ed Rising uh, videos at, um, at Rio Salado College. So make sure that you uh, take a look at all the recordings. They're in our, they're in my YouTube channel, which I, um, is linked here. You can also access them in the slides of this, of this webinar. And they're, they're readily available in our Google Classroom. So here are some things um, you should know about YouTube. There's uh, 1.5 billion viewers logged into um, visit user YouTube every month. Um, their editing capabilities apparently are going away. They're, they're, they've changed a little bit. Um, there's a YouTube VR channel if you're into their virtual reality. Um, and YouTube Live is, has replaced Hangouts on Air. They also, um, you can also access music through YouTube. And there are some improvements to YouTube Kids, um, which is a section just for kid-friendly stuff. So I want you to think about using YouTube in your classroom for creating, consuming, and curating. And you may be wondering where your YouTube channel is. Um, here's a link to mine. You can, you can find it by youtube.com slash user slash my username, which is Ella Menace. Um, you, uh, you would go to youtube.com and log in with your Google account. If you don't have one, you need to create one. And um, that's where your YouTube channel will be. You'll probably be led through some steps to set up your YouTube channel. Uh, but that's your personal video space. Now, you may not be creating videos, but you can make playlists and have them display in your YouTube channel of other people's content. Um, and you can create videos in very simple ways, and we'll go into that in a while. You don't have to be of the Hank and John Green quality uh, in order to create a video. Um, and I think of YouTube, my YouTube channel is my space for curating stuff that I want to use in presentations or classes or whatever. And I'm always looking to add to the playlists I've started so if I come across a great video. Um, that's where I bookmark it and save it for future reference. If you are in a school that's using Google Apps for Education, which is now called G Suite for Education, have your, make sure that your admin of that setup has turned on YouTube for you and your students. Um, sometimes they don't allow it, so you might want to make sure that you um, have access to it. Uh, so there's a bunch of gain starring videos that are linked here that you can use um, if you have further questions. So creation tools, let's talk about creating. Uh, look at this big video camera um, from several years ago. You don't need a big fancy video camera to create videos anymore. It's become much more accessible to the common man and woman out there. Uh, you can create with mobile devices, with your computer's webcam, with digital cameras, with video cameras, and you can create videos using still images in very, very easy ways. Um, some other methods are through websites such as Animoto or VoiceThread or WeVideo. You can record right into YouTube, I believe. Um, YouTube Live, which is formerly Hangouts on Air, allows you to uh, basically do kind of a Skype-like session with someone and record it. Um, and you can also uh, embark on what is known as screencasting, where you're recording your screen. On my Mac, I use QuickTime, which is free and built in, and I can record things. Um, I can use software like Zoom right now, like a webinar type of tool, and not necessarily have an audience in there and just record what I'm doing. Um, Camtasia is very popular. Screener, Jing, Screencast-O-Matic is great. Um, these are all options for you to create videos. Uh, on your iPad and possibly on other kinds of tablets, you may find some apps that will allow you to create. Uh, YouTube Capture is the one that you would use on an iPad. VoiceThread, ScreenChamp, iMovie, iStopMotion lets you do stop motion videos. Uh, Animation Creator, um, Explain Everything, Educreations, Animoto. These are all apps 
Uh, some of them are web-based now too, like Animoto and Explain Everything, in addition to being available on, um, on the iPad. So right now, I'm going to do a little bit of a guided tour for you. I'm going to go into um, my, I'm presenting from my iPad tonight, so I'm going to go into YouTube on my Safari browser and show you what it looks like a little bit. And I'm going to close this tab right now. There we go. So this looks a little different than it would on a computer. Um, I could show you on the app. But basically on your front page, um, I, I may switch over to my computer in a minute and show you what it looks like. But um, you can see that I am, here's my account with that little person on it. And let's see if I'm logged in to, yep, I'm logged into the right place. Um, so that's me, and this is my home page where the little icon of the home is, and you can see um, videos that have been recently uploaded um, or recommended based on my surfing habits and that sort of thing. Um, so you'll see some of the most recent things from um, things that I follow. And so, for instance, um, Go Noodle is um, an, uh, a website that people really like for getting their students moving in classroom. There are all sorts of kinds of videos to, uh, for different uh, times of the day in your classroom. Um, and kids get really motivated by it, apparently. So you can go and look at a video. And um, this one probably has a lot of music with it. I'm going to turn off autoplay. And hopefully it will come up. There we go. Hey, Neil. Hey, what? Are you ready? For what? To pop. Pop what? Popsico. My hands are high, my feet are low, and this is how I popsico. His hands are So I'm going to pause that for a minute. These uh, videos are really popular at the primary grades, and um, you can check out their website at, at gonoodle.com or either playlists that are here on YouTube. So there are a couple things you can do here. You can like the video. Um, you can not like the video. I guess uh, there are a few people who don't like it. You can share it with other people by pressing the arrow and you can share it to social media or um, copy the link to it and paste it into an email. Um, you can also add it to a playlist. So um, I have a bunch of playlists that I've created for different topics and I can make a new playlist on the go or add it to um, one of the ones I have created. And I have a lot of playlists here so I think I have to go all the way down to the bottom to create a new one. Let's see. Yep, create a new playlist. I can um, you know, type in what I want to call the playlist. And I can make it public or private or unlisted. I'm gonna make it unlisted just because I'm creating this for here. It's not for any real purpose. And I create the playlist and that will be in my playlist now, this particular video. Um, you can also look at these full screen. The gear symbol will let you um, show subtitles in different languages. That's kind of cool. And you can also, um, determine the quality of the playback that you want to see. So this is, um, and they also have some um, cards that are built into here. If you press this I for information, um, it gives you some other videos to go look at. Uh, so here it is, and you can see- Hi, it's Peter Lo, and this is how we pop sick toes. Pop, sick pop, pop, sick pop, sick pop, pop, sick Hey, Brian, hey, what? Are you ready? For what? So that might be kind of fun for a language class. Anyway, um, um, I'm, I don't want to play picture in picture, but I could do that if I wanted to on my iPad. Um, anyway, so that's what a video will look like in YouTube, and you can save them to playlists so that you have them for future use. The other thing that you can do in YouTube is you can search. So if you want to search for algebra videos, uh, let's say Algebra 2 videos, you can do that. 
if your internet connection decides to go there, come on. There we go. Okay. And um, so you can see all these videos that other people have made. Now, you may not want to look at, at however many there are. There's probably um, several thousand of these, right? So you can um, look for, do you, want a cha do you want all videos? Do you want a channel? Do you want a playlist? Um, do you want um, things that were created this year that might be more recent? So I'm going to say I want to find playlists. And here you'll find a bunch of playlists that have been created by other teachers for their Algebra 2 classes. So here's one by MapCamp uh, 321, whoever that is. And it looks like they're using a graphing calcul calculator and that sort of thing. They've got 40 videos here. Maybe you'd find something useful here. You can also subscribe by clicking on this button um, that look, with the lines and the plus sign. You can also subscribe to that in your channel as well. So you'll get updates if MathCamp 321 ever adds more to it. You can also share this playlist to social media or give this link to your students. Okay. So, um, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel necessarily if you're looking for something to use in your class to supplement teaching. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you too, um, I actually probably should switch to my desktop to show you what that looks like in a minute. Um, let me go back to YouTube's homepage. And you can see, um, there's some, there's, here's some that I've put up here for, for to watch later. Here's some recommended ones based on my habits, so on and so forth. Um, here's some recent ones from some of the channels I subscribe to, so on and so forth. Okay, um, we'll go back to the desktop in a second, but I'm gonna keep going with my slides um, and show you a little bit more about this. So, um, there are online editing capabilities in YouTube, and apparently they're changing a little bit, and I'll show you what they look like in a minute. But you can add clickable annotations and speech bubbles to any video that you can upload. That may be gone. I'll have to double check. You can autocorrect the color, add color filters to stabilize video images. You can blur faces if you're concerned about student privacy. Uh, YouTube also has a library of copyright-friendly audio that you can add to your videos. They will ban, if you have any kind of music that's copyrighted, there's some algorithm in YouTube that detects it and they'll block that video. So don't use video, don't use music that you don't own the rights to. Um, you can also upload caption files and transcripts. And, uh, and if you want to go look at the editing capabilities, go to youtube.com slash editor and I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. So this is what it's kind of looked like um, when editing a YouTube video. So if you create a video and you upload it, you have the ability to trim it and to do some sort of things. There's, there's some tools that pop up if you own the video and you can see them, um, you can see them right below the video right here. You see that in this area here. Um, so, so that's where you would go to do it and I'll do a demonstration of that as well. In terms of consuming uh, videos, you can, you can do it on a number of devices. Um, use computers, mobile devices using the YouTube app or your web browser. Uh, you can consume videos through YouTube Live presentations. I, I really like live presentations from you know, when educators are using that. Um, you can organize things into playlists, like I mentioned. You can also put videos into Google Forms. So you could have your students watch a video and then respond in, a, in another field within a Google form and submit that as, as a test or a, you know, an exercise in writing or something like that. You can also embed um, videos in other kinds of websites like wikis and blogs. So here's an example. This is kind of a dated version because Google Forms has changed. Um, but you could put in a um a a video and have the kids watch it and then have add a an item that would test them on on what they viewed in the video okay so um 
the other thing I want to mention is that I think it's really important to be able to curate in, in YouTube effectively. And I showed you how to search a little bit previously. Um, on the web version of, of YouTube, it's a little bit more robust, and I'll show you that in a moment. You're going to, you can, you can browse videos, you can search in that query box in YouTube, and then there are filters so that you can um, whittle down your choices. And I recommend creating playlists for the units that you teach and then set them up ahead of time. And, um, and, and when you find a video that you, that you like and you think is really worthy, save it to one of your playlists so that you have it for future reference. You can also collect videos created by your students to show parents and create a playlist. And if you want to keep videos private, you can do that, or you can make it un, um, you can make it visible but not searchable, so that uh, the, the link to a playlist, so that you could share it with other people without, and people won't stumble upon it if you don't want that. Uh, where do you find good content that you might use in playlists? And, and these are a few of, of my favorite channels. Edutopia, Google Science Fair, NASA, the Library of Congress, uh, Congress Common Sense Educators, uh, Buck Institute for Project-Based Learning Stuff, and EdSurge, which is an ed tech site. Um, and I guess I didn't talk about curating effectively. Oh, I did do that. Okay. Um, so that's where I find content. Um, to put things into playlists, you can do it on the fly or you can do it in your channel's video manager. There are a couple different ways to do it. And you can, um, you know, add a video uh, by clicking on the plus button and adding them to a playlist. And I'm going to um, keep going here. Some specific instructional uses are for flipping your classroom where your students watch lectures and other content at home. And then they do more hands-on teacher-directed activities uh, during the school day, during your lab time, or whatever you have set up. Uh, you can use YouTube videos for language practice, for assessments and reflections, have kids record themselves talking about what they think. Uh, you can set up uh, YouTube playlists for independent studies or use videos as writing prompts. Um, I also like to see schools document their field trips and, and show what is learned on these things instead of having field trips be a passive experience. Um, one teacher has done some uh, choose your own adventure activities and there's some other ideas here from educator Tammy Brass. Uh, Teach Hub has some video uh, writing prompts that you could use on different things um, or you could create your own. And this is the history teacher, Greg uh, Kulowek. Um, I'm not sure if he's still in the classroom anymore, but he used to have um, these, these video projects where the kids had to create a series of videos and they were linked together. Um, and people would choose, they'd go to one video and then they'd have a choice and they'd take one pathway or the other. So linked in here in the slides here are directions on how he did that. The other thing I want you to be aware of is that many schools are using YouTube as a promotional vehicle and have their own channels where they're showcasing the things that are going on in their school district. So these are three that, I, uh, that you may want to take a look at. Punahou School, which is an independent school in Hawaii, Minnetonka Schools in Minnesota, and Maynard New Tech in Texas. And then um, this is my YouTube EDU list. I add to this occasionally of uh, high quality educational YouTube channels. And you can click on the header here in the slides um, to go visit them. But I continually add to this because I think it's difficult for people to find um, YouTube channels uh, unless they have a lot of time on their hands. And so I've made this handy list for you. I also have some recommended places if you want to learn more about YouTube and how uh, creators are using this in, in interesting ways. So make sure you check out these channels. And these are the resources that I mentioned at the beginning. On the left-hand side, those are Google resources. Um, on the right-hand side are, are resources that I've produced. I believe that TAC resource is not no longer valid. And if you need to talk to me or you need some help or you want to look at my YouTube channel, here are some resources for that.
now I'm going to I'm going to um, stop sharing um, on my iPad and if I can figure out how to do that and I'm going to show you um, what YouTube looks like on a computer and give you another you another another uh, look at um, it from the desktop computer perspective. So give me a second here while I pull up my screen and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here. Um, so I'm going to share my desktop. Actually, I'm going to share my Google Chrome browser. And you should be looking at my um, at my browser on my computer on my Mac desktop, and you can see that this looks a little bit different than it did on the iPad. On the left hand side, this is my home page. You're seeing um, recent videos, recommended videos. Um, um, YouTube giving is new. That must be something that we're for charities. Uh, things that I've stopped watching in the middle of, um, and other recent videos that may be of interest to, to me that are new. So it's kind of pointing me to some content that may be helpful to me. On the left hand um, tab, you'll also will see trending, things that people are watching on the internet, which I typically don't find anything useful in there. Um, but you can click here and see live, and you can see live um, events that are going on um, that are being broadcast on YouTube and various channels. And most of the stuff here is not necessarily, again, super education friendly. I don't know. Um, but you, it's not, it's there. I prefer to look at my subscriptions. I've, I've subscribed to lots of YouTube channels and I'll see the most, um, most recent stuff that has come up from the channels I subscribe to. And I'll, I'll show you those in a little bit too. Um, then in my library, you can see my history. Um, you can see uh, stuff I've saved to watch later. Um, you can see the Go, Go, the Go Noodle playlist I just made. Videos I've liked, which, you know, saves everything in a playlist for me. And then all my other playlists that I've created are also visible here through a pull down menu. So these are, um, that's in my library. And I don't think that's publicly, some of the stuff may be publicly available, but most of it is, is not readily. And I'll show you where to find that in a minute. If you scroll down the left hand side too, you will also see my subscriptions. I subscribe to like 900 different channels. Um, so I can click on, and that little red icon there means that there's live stuff going on. So this is kind of cool. Look at this. This is NASA, and they have live views from the space station, which I think is super educational. NASA typically has always had great multimedia resources for education on their website and, and other channels. They they tend to be pretty savvy. So um, if you're teaching a space unit and you want to show kids what the space station looks like a little bit and what the view of Earth looks like from space, this might be a place that you would want to come and look at this. Um, you may see this button on my YouTube channel here. It says edit with Edpuzzle. And um, Edpuzzle is a third-party tool. It's free to some degree. And you can add a video with this. It's, it, and why it's appearing here is because I've added a, an extension in Chrome to my browser that, that will let me take this video and edit it for instructional purposes, I guess I can't do it with that, um, to Edpuzzle. Let's see if I can get into Edpuzzle to show you what it looks like. So Edpuzzle lets you um, put videos in here and then you can create uh, stopping points and quizzes and, and, other, and other links inside the video and assign it to your, to your students. Um, it's pretty powerful. I'm not gonna go into it in, in heavy duty, in a heavy duty way, but for some reason, 
Uh, it's the way the video is private on YouTube. Okay, so it's not going to work. This particular video is not going to work on that. Um, but anyway, so you, NASA is one channel that I follow, um, and I don't, I don't look at everything that they post. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll take a look at their stuff, and I have it in my subscriptions um, in order to, to kind of track it when I want to. These other ones here are from explore.org, and you can click on them. Let's go to Explore Africa and see what's going on there. So here are some videos from that are live there from Lookout Cameras in Africa. And then here are some ones that are uh, been filmed over the past few years. If you wanted to subscribe to this channel, there would be a red button in the right hand side that you would click on subscribed and you would have it in your subscriptions. It's like a magazine subscription. Um, you can see that I've already subscribed to it, otherwise the button would be red. So I'm going to go right now to a video that's recorded. And I can add this to a playlist. Um, it's muted right now, so we're not listening to the music. Um, I can, or the sound, look at all those hippos, wow. Um, anyway, I can click on edit with Ed Puzzle. Let's see if it would work. Okay, so I brought this video into Ed Puzzle, and it's not going to it's not going to alter the original video at all. It's just bringing the link in basically, and I can crop the video if I don't want my students to watch the whole thing. Very often these videos are long, and you just want them to watch a clip or something. So I can crop the video. I can add a voiceover with some directions or asking them to pay attention to something. I can add audio notes and I can make quizzes. And then I can save it and, send, and share it to my students. So that's a better example of a video that works, um, that will work video. Those YouTube live ones I don't think will. Um, so anyway, this is one of many subscriptions of, of websites, that, of YouTube channels that I like. Um, and I don't want them all to show up right now because there's so many of them and I can close it by I should be able to toggle something so that they turn off but I guess not maybe it's at the way at the bottom here and I'm sure you're looking at this right now and going oh she's got way too much time in her hands well I don't look at all of these things at all all right, there we go. So if I show less, they go away. Okay, um, there's more stuff from YouTube. You can pay for YouTube stuff for movies and, and there's gaming. There's a live section. There's also some settings here on the left-hand side. This is where you would manage your account. Um, under advanced settings, I don't know if there's anything here that you need to know. It tells you your channels, what address, what you're signed into, blah 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 blah. Um, if you want to post, if you want to like, if you like a video and you want to post to social media, you can you can change that there. They used to have this feature where you could you had a private email address and if you emailed a video to it like that you created, it would post it to YouTube. But they got rid of that feature a while ago, and I'm bummed. It used to be available in this area. Um, I also I don't know if this is something that's custom to you know I added a. a Chrome extension to it, or if it's part of YouTube or not. But I have the switch here too, up in the low, upper left-hand corner, that um, lets me change from a light to a dark interface. Um, I don't know if you guys have that or not, but uh, it may be something that I added on to YouTube through um, Google Chrome extensions. So make sure you check out all the stuff on the left-hand um, left-hand side in your YouTube channel. You should also check out the top. And I'm going to drag this down a little bit so I can see it better. Um, but there is, um, here's your search bar where you can see where, what you've searched before. Um, there is a, and let me do one search for you. So let's say we do, uh, we want digital citizenship for kids materials. Um, there's my search. Click on filter and I can find stuff that's created this year that is short and 
um, it whittles down the number of videos I have to look at. So you may find more stuff there by applying filters to your search. Um, and usually it, show, it shows you a number of, of how many videos you found in that search, but I don't see that here. Anyway, um, make sure you take advantage of the query box and then these filters in order to make your search more efficient. The other thing you should know is that you can go live with if you have a webcam on your device and do a YouTube live um, recording, you can also upload a video. Uh, so if you've created your video on iMovie or something like that, you can upload it here. You can probably also directly upload it from iMovie as well. Um, and you can also import videos from Google Photos and set things up to do live streaming with YouTube Live and that sort of thing. Um, this is for notifications. Um, I'm going to go back to my front page. Um, uh, this waffle will show me YouTube apps here. These are other YouTube areas here. Um, this will show you, this is like a message. You can send messages to your friends that you are, you, you follow on YouTube. Uh, here are your notifications and you can alter those notifications too if you want to in your settings. So if you find them annoying, make sure you go to your settings and change them so that you don't, aren't, no, you aren't notified as much. And then here's my account information. Um, I can change my theme here as well, change my language, uh, so on and so forth. Now, to get to my channel, I click on my channel, and you can see that this is like my home page for all my videos. I've changed the graphic at the top, and um, there are buttons here to customize it and to manage my videos. It, it's something called YouTube Studio Beta, and there's also that's a new feature that's not quite uh, ready for prime time. So there are a couple of different ways to, to manage my videos that I've created. And um, you'll, you'll notice that your, your channel may look different than mine. I've set mine up with these different tabs at the top and the search capabilities. Um, I put recommended channels here on the front for people to look at. Um, and I've also put some of the playlists of content that I've created over the years or that I've curated um, on the front page here. You can also, this is a really good way to find other channels. You can also look through my subscriptions and say, oh, I want to subscribe to the teaching channel. That looks like it's a good one. So you can see ones that I've subscribed to and see if there's anything that you would be interested in as well. Um, videos that I've liked and other favorite channels also appear here. This is all custom organized by clicking on this button that says customize channel. So you can only do this with your own channel, not everybody else's, obviously. Um, but you can go here. It's giving me an error message. Um, but that's, that's theoretically, you, could, you can change the banner. You can put some custom links into your channel, all sorts of different things. Um, I, could, I could direct you to my channel if I wanted you to watch something. Um, and you could direct students to your channel, that sort of thing. Uh, now. Um, this thing called YouTube Studio. This is where, this is like the back end of your channel. And this is where you would go to manage your videos, to look at the analytics with, you know, um, you know, if there are any comments or how many people have looked at your videos and that sort of thing. If you want to delete something or change its, its visibility, this is where you would go to do it. Um, and it, it's, it, there's also some built-in help here. You see this question mark, and there you can search here and, um, you know, see all the articles that are available to help you organize and manage your YouTube account. You can search across your channel. Um, and if you find it that it's not working the way you want to, which I found when working with it, um, you can go back to the old version of this, which was called YouTube Video Manager, I believe. And this is, again, where this is the old look to it. 
um, and you can go back to this and and use the features that are here. So um, I'm going to show you one of my videos and show you how to edit it next, and then we'll wrap up. So let's see. This is this is some some video that I created for Rio. Uh, I guess I was just playing around with it. Um, I can choose what I want the thumbnail to look like after it's been recorded. I can fill in the description and put in tags. I can add it to a playlist and I can make it uh, private or unprivate and then I can save the changes. So um, that's under information and settings. I can also go to enhancements and I can blur faces on here. And people who are subscribed to my channel, so I, wish I don't I would even stop. And people who are subscribed to my channel, stop. Okay, so I can go in here and I can blur faces, which is pretty cool. I guess I don't have to do anything; it just will do it automatically. That's pretty wild. Um, and you can revert to original or save as a new video. Um. You can put in audio for um, from there from um, music that's here that's copyright friendly. And you can try it out before you do it. <laughs> um, so that's another option. And then there's end screen and annotation. So the end screen is new, I believe. And I have not played around with this, one, but probably there's probably some sort of end screen. Oh, you can you can um, promote another channel, so I put a subscribe button in there, or uh, promote a video or playlist. I guess that's what that does. Um, and then there's cards, which are like little boxes that pop up on your video if you want to direct people to other things you can use that and then here you also um, can manage subtitles and um, upload transcripts and that sort of thing if you want to add closed captioning so there's a lot you can do uh, in terms of editing um, there was the ability to cut video too and I think it in the new YouTube creator it's better but if you go to youtube.com slash editor, let's see. Nope, that's not it. So if I switch back, so I thought you could do, you could actually edit the video itself. And I'm not sure where you would do that now. I know that you can do it when you go back to, instead of using the YouTube, the old manager, going to use YouTube Studio Beta. Finding a video that you want to edit from your from your libraries that you've uploaded. So here's that lovely example that I did. Um, I know there's a way to edit it, and I'm just not seeing it. Let's see. There it is again. If you select it, click on edit, title description tags visibility. Maybe not. I could have sworn that you could take things off of it. So, you know, if you wanted to trim it a little bit, I just did it the other I just did it the other night. So I don't know where I did it, but you can you can make those changes somewhere here. That will be another webinar for the next time. Anyway, I hope that you um, were able to get some ideas for using YouTube either by consuming it and finding content that will benefit your professional practice or your classroom teaching, um, or that you'll find a way that this has helped you find some ways to curate videos to use them in your classroom. And you've, you've hopefully found some ideas for uh, creating uh, videos on your own. You know, even if they're not super high quality, you can be a YouTube creator too. 
Um, but I really think it's a, a, you know, this is kind of like the 21st century uh, skill for educators that they probably don't know that they need. I think you need to be able to consume, create, consume, uh, consume, curate, and, and, and create videos in this day and age. It's just become such a popular genre and a way of reaching young people. And I think it's really important for you to know how to do that. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, stop this recording and upload it to YouTube uh, for everybody to listen to uh, at a later time. Thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, let me know. Um, make sure you go back to the beginning of this recording and get the information about finding our slides in Google Classroom, and uh, best of luck to you all. Thank you.